Thank you, Kimura. How can I gain the upper hand? What strategy will grant me victory? My lord, I bear unfortunate news. The Takeda forces have thrown in their lot with Mitsunari. So he has spurned my friendship for Mitsunari. I see you, Kimura. I knew not how deep your hatred ran, nor how icy its grasp. Yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to prevent this. Yukimura always sides with Mitsunari every single time, unfortunately. Alright, welcome back to Let's Play Bossera 3. Let's see who wins this time. Oh, wow, Shimatsu beat uh, Kanbei Kuroda, which means we don't have to fight him. I was looking forward to not fighting him this time. Hideaki joined up with Mitsunari. Go figure with that one. Um... Which is a bit of an upset for our side because he was pretty neutral before, but we'll probably have to fight him at Sekigahara. Sekigahara is determined, the opponents that you fight are determined based off of how the conquest, or how the campaign went. It's fairly random, just like the conquest mode of the previous games. And as we saw with the, um, the Basara 1 Let's Play, uh, I can't always predict what kind of opponents I'm going to be fighting, so I want to show off as many different opponents as I can and not leave anybody out. But there's unfortunately going to be some repeat battles eventually. Um, so you may see me uh, purposefully avoid like a major character in favor of a minor character just to show them off. Um, so I'm going to be adjusting my setup really quick here. Yeah, that line that Ieyasu says there uh, when Yukimura makes his decision is pretty poetic because he's like, I knew not how deep your hatred ran, nor how icy its grasp, and I cannot think of anything more poetic to say about Yukimura's blight. So, very well said, Ieyasu, and that will definitely set the tone as things go forward. And uh, Yukimura's blight is portrayed well in the game. It's also portrayed... Well, it's it's portrayed well in the game. It's not really made out to be like he has much of a blight in the in the movie. Um, it's, it's not... Uh, it's, they don't really do much with it. And then in Judge End, it's not done very well at all uh, by comparison. There's really no incentive for Yukimura to want to side with Mitsunari in Judge End. But I'll talk about Perhaps that more when right. we get to Yukimura's I'll entire campaign that we will have Mitsunari. as an option. So instead of fighting Uesuke Kenshin, we're going to be fighting this no-name guy over here. So uh, there are six... Six potential enemies you can fight in this game that are non-playable, in addition to reoccurring characters from the previous games. These non-playable generals are real people from the Sengoku War, but they are um, they're irrelevant. So this is um, Yoshishige Sataka, and he is a uh, or Satake rather, yeah, and he is irrelevant to say the least. Um, I really can't even tell you what his um, his personality quirk is, other than he is clumsy, and he is, you know, noble and, and good and just and everything, but he's also, like, very pessimistic about his fighting skills and everything. My computer just made it sound like a helicopter taking off there. I don't know what that was all about. I feel like my Mac is finally starting to show his age. I got this Mac all the way back in 2011, back when I first started doing, um... Let's Plays with a slightly different quality, at least. That was the whole reason why I got this this Mac, but um, I have no idea what these guys are. Oh, Ignorance is Bliss. <laughs> so they have they have no clue what's going on. So, yeah, there are random wandering uh, sects of his army wandering around like this. So we can run into these guys occasionally and beat the crap out of them, as demonstrated. These guys with the little... Uh, I guess the little blocks um, are supposed to represent like the blocks they move around a map uh, during you know wartime strategizing and all that. So you'll see those moving around the actual map in game, which is a nice touch. I definitely think that's a nice detail. So you'll see that um, on this guy. I think it said occupation. Yeah, occupation chief. So he's he is specifically going to go occupy our camp. So we want to we want to defend that and get rid of him as soon as possible. So if we see one of those large we see the smaller blocks on the map. Those are command units and um, commanders and things like that that are walking around the map. We definitely want to take those out. Same, it's That's pretty much par for the course in most every other Muso game as well. But those big ones we saw there with the hollow center, those are the occupational chiefs that are not on every single map. 
but the ones on this map are meant specifically to go take back those sectors. We have to we have to clear all three of the um, the sectors that are or the, the camps that are marked on the map in order to proceed and to get to the boss. So um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about Yoshishige Satake. So uh, he actually was a fairly relevant um, Daimo during the Sengoku Jidai. Uh, I looked it up a little bit, and apparently he had he had a couple run-ins with um, had a couple run-ins with Masamune. He was uh, a close ally with uh, um, Hideyoshi, and was uh, trying to keep Masamune at bay during that time. And uh, so he ended up siding when Seki when the whole um, uh, Sekigahara thing broke out. He ended up siding with uh, Mitsunari actually. So. Um, it makes sense that we end up having to fight him here. I don't know if he ever makes it to Sekigahara in the game, but yeah, we definitely... It, it definitely does make sense that we would be fighting him here because he is technically allies with Mitsunari, but a lot of these other characters... These side generals are usually uh, irrelevant or they are, they are all neutral and we can fight them on either side. So it's pretty much just your preference of whichever stage you choose to go to. I could have fought a Whiskey Kenshin. Um, there are certain maps that are considered storyline specific that you have to complete no matter what, and then you can do some optional ones depending on what route you have uh, for which which character you're playing as. But um, there are you won't ever go past eight fights per campaign. So. It's really, the campaign structure for Basra 3 is really brilliant compared to uh, the previous games. They made it a little bit longer, a little bit more value to the game and the, to the, uh, you know, really feel like your your time is uh, better spent in Basra 3 than it was in the previous games. But there's still a feeling of, you know, story accomplishment and linearity while having things be random enough and having enough uh, potential for rapidly changing in dynamic situations to where it has a high replay value. And I haven't even scratched the surface of the replay value yet, so there's a lot more that you guys don't even know about yet, or maybe you do if you played the game before, that I'll be talking about towards the end. It's hard to walk in his armor. You see? Clumsiness doesn't help. Well, there he is. Yoshishige Satake, everybody. Um, he's got some interesting uh, fighting mechanics. He does that that uh, dragoon jump and that ground pound that we're used to seeing in like a Final Fantasy game, for instance, of course. He is no match against Ieyasu's fists of justice. Um, but we did actually fill up his gauge there by doing that, so he may try to use his uh, his boss attack against us, which I'm not especially worried about. Yeah, he's pretty. Uh, he's not especially strong. Sometimes I get lost. He only has one uh, star because we've taken over all of his command posts. Of course, there is actually one inside of this area we're in right now, the, rig, the big red dot at the back of the map there, which I would go after that. I went after it in my test run, but um, frankly, there's not much of a need because we've almost got him. All right, we're going to use our fury drive gauge and go ahead and finish him off here. I really like his uh, spear combo there that he's using uh, when he uses his boss for attack. I think that was kind of a waste because he's still in the middle of his boss for attack animation. He can't be hurt. Um, yeah, that was a complete waste. If anything, it just prevented us from taking any damage. Oh, look, one of those occupational uh, chiefs went and took over one of the command posts, so that's unfortunate. So he's gotten a little bit of his... He's got one star back, which is unfortunate, but we've almost defeated him anyway, so I'm not even really worried about it at all. This is actually a close fight the first time that I fought him. I had to go up there and make sure I cleared out the command post and thinned out his reinforcements a little bit, because he has a lot of guys helping him right now. You mean... It seems like he does this buff attack where he like grows in size weirdly and tries to get more strong. I'm going to be using the charged punches a lot more from now on. I'm trying to gradually introduce more of the combat mechanics of Ieyasu. But we haven't unlocked all of them yet, which we will be doing soon. 